my degenerates, my degenerates, um, I just want to say, you know, I, I can be a procrastinator sometimes. Sometimes I get shit done ASAP and other times I just be like, I'll wait, I'll wait. Oh, this is, this is going to be done later. Don't worry about it. And then we're in March and you still can't get a top 10 favorite movies of 2023. I want to apologize to you guys. Uh, I was procrastinating so hard. Plus, I had to watch a lot. And I repeat, a lot of movies in order to get ready for this video. Uh, because there was a lot of movies that I completely forgot that came out in 2023. However, it is 2024. It is in March at the time of this recording. So we are just going to shut the hell up and get straight into it. This is my top 10 favorite movies of 2023 there will be timestamps in the description box below so if you just want to know what's my number one favorite movie you can go straight in without further ado we just going in but before we begin i just want to give a quick honorable mentions to movies that were really good because 2023 had amazing movies and some even was like my favorite movie going experience of 2023 but i couldn't put it on my list for x y of reasons and i just want to at least give them a huge shout out first shout outs goes to the color purple i had an amazing beautiful almost romantic um theater going experience with this movie so that's why it's on my list creed 3 this is an anime ass anime movie bro like shout outs to michael b jordan this is first time directing and he kills it he wears his love for anime in this movie so much that i'm just so proud of him you know you are a dweeb but embrace that shit, motherfucker. And you embraced it in this movie. And you made a cool-ass movie. This is way better than Creed 2. The Killer. I haven't seen Michael Fassbender act in a minute. So it was good to see him portray, like, this creepy, almost, like, unnerving um, assassin. That was cool. Shoutouts to Michael Fassbender. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutant Mayhem. This one... Shout outs to my, my boys. They they convinced me this was a good movie. And I have to agree. It is actually a pretty good movie. The bacon, egg, and cheese bit <laughs> uh, will go down in history as like my favorite scene in the movie. <laughs> so cute. Evil Dead Rising. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, this movie is so good. It's so good. Uh, has the coolest opening of a horror movie. And also uh stay away from cheese graters that's all i gotta say about this movie attraction 2 that 25 long take in the prison wow beautiful that's some action cinema goodness saw 10 surprisingly good like generally surprised that this was good after the shit the saw franchise had been through this was the strongest in a while blue beetle I swear to God, James Gunn, if you do not bring back Robbie Reyes and his family, we gonna have a problem. This was actually pretty cool. Now, the next three movies are like super honorable mentions. These are like the crim dollar crim. Past Lives, such a realistic and beautiful depiction of love and like lingering love that I'm just like, Fuck, this is such an amazing movie. Uh, so beautiful. They cloned Tyrone. A hilarious movie. Such a hilarious movie, but with real world shit to say. It has a lot to say. Uh, I think the thing that will be ingrained in my head is assimilation is better than annihilation. Oh my goodness. Whoever wrote that fucking line, heat. <laughs> heat but scary <laughs> the mario movie shout outs to nintendo uh while i don't think the movie was perfect in fact it's very much a one and done i never want to really want to watch this movie again this was this was a fucking awesome ass theater going experience something that i will treasure for the rest of my life and i can't thank nintendo enough for taking the initiative 
and saying, hey, let's take a risk again. All right, let's come back into Hollywood and let's see how things go. And they fucking did it. And it's an amazing movie for that. And I can't, I can't thank them enough. This lays the foundation for what we can see for more Nintendo licensed movies. Now with honorable mentions done, let's go straight into that top 10. So to kick things off with number 10, we got to talk about this movie that no one fucking saw. And it breaks my heart that no one saw this movie. Does of the Dragons, Honor Amongst Thieves. Oh my goodness. This movie is so cool. This movie is so awesome that it disappoints me that no one wants to go see it or not a lot of people want to go see it because it is so great. It's made with love and passion. You can tell the people who worked on this film love D&D, love the world of D&D, and was just like, yeah, we're just going to honor it by making a D by getting a bunch of A-lister celebrities and force them to make a uh, of play a D, D game and then we're gonna film them doing it and it's so fucking cool it's so hilarious it's hilarious and the best part of this is that you don't even need to know D, D in order to enjoy it I, I felt like on my first watch of this movie i was like oh this movie is actually hilarious just by some of the running gags and jokes that they have but once you know D, &D lore and how D D's played Oh my goodness, this movie is fucking hilarious. It is just hilarious how great they capture the essence of D&D &D, um, so well. It, it's kind of crazy. And it's just a shame that it didn't do that well. Hopefully we'll get a sequel. But my god, like, damn, this was one of a surprising hit for me. My only issue with the film is that some of the dialogue can be a little bit like jibber jabber because they're they're talking in like we the audience already knows what the fuck they're talking about and sometimes it's just like what? But you get you you're able to follow along. And my only and this one is a nitpick. This is a fucking nitpick. I would love to have seen the cast actually was not human characters i know like we have one non-human character in the cast but it would have been nice to have like more non-human characters in the cast um it would have been fucking awesome but sadly we don't we don't have that but that would have been a true DD campaign if we had more diverse um characters but i didn't know an amazing movie easily in my top for number nine i had to give it to uh, mission impossible dead reckoning part one or as it's now called just dead reckoning uh because the movie didn't do well because uh somebody decided to put it right next to or a week before barbenheimer <laughs> like i don't get it but anywho I just want to put this as number nine because this movie was fucking awesome. I don't think it's better than than Fallout. Fallout is the best of the of the Mission Impossible franchise, and I would even go as far as to say I don't think it's better than uh, Ghost Protocol. I really love Ghost Protocol. Like that movie is fucking awesome, but this movie is just balls to the wall, crazy, exciting, nonstop action spy thriller bro this is a fucking cool ass movie man and like tom cruise once again this man is a fucking man, man. he's a man, man he just keeps being consistent and that's why it's on my list because in a day and age where all franchises like the fast and the furious has gone down to hell um the mcu is whatever and don't even get me started on dc it's good to have a franchise that still is consistently putting out quality after quality after banger after banger. And this is no exception. The only issue I have with this movie is really that they just do pointless retcons. And that's because this movie is like the franchise has been going on for so long. And I'm proud of them for keeping it consistent and doing so well. But some of the retcons they did in here... It didn't need to happen. Also, this is a part one or to be continued type movie. And I just didn't feel, at least in my humble opinion, that the movie didn't do enough to 
entice the audience to come back. This is why I think now they're calling it just uh, Mission Impossible uh, Dead Reckoning. Because it's like, it didn't do enough, at least from my humble opinion, to say, oh my god, this needs to be cut in two parts. Like, or, oh my god, I can't wait for the second part. I was just kind of like, oh, this was awesome. But if I wanted to not watch the second part, I felt like, all right, this was fine enough. And to me, that's not what I want out of a part one. I want it to end on a huge ass cliffhanger or something, something that makes me ask a question, like something, like anything. <laughs> I like, and it just didn't do that again. But the action scenes and everything about the movie. Um, they even have my girl from freaking Peggy Carter. Oh my goodness, she's so good. There's this one funny gag between her and Tom Cruise in, in a car that was fucking hilarious to me. But besides the point, another negative I would give is that there is one death that happens in the film. I'm not going to spoil it, but it did make me like raise an eyebrow of why they did that death. And I'm just kind of hoping in part two uh that that gets rectified because i'm like i'm really not a huge fan of tom cruise you were moving these female characters that's all i'm gonna say and that's all i'm gonna say on this movie other than that tom cruise wow bless this man's soul and his team you guys are mad men, but thank you for entertaining us. For number eight, I gotta give it up to Martin Scorsese. Regardless of how you feel about the man, the man can direct his ass off. I gotta give it up to Killers on the Flower Moon. This movie was so fucking good. Like, I was not expecting this movie to be anything, but it turned out to be a really damn good film. Like, holy shit so emotional so well told i was like oh my goodness and you would think that it would be leonardo DiCaprio that holds this movie together no it's literally um lily gladstone like she's the heart of this film like the all the bullshit that happens with her people and her tribe and her trying to get some resolution, some, like, some help for this whole tr tragedy is, like, really, like, really empowering to see her just go through this shit and, like, stay strong throughout this whole shit. And, like, she's carrying this movie on her fucking back, you know, like, she's killing it in this film. And the movie is just so written so well like some of the dialogue and some of the things characters say um it's just like like you you just take a turn your head a little bit you're like what the fuck did you just say such a good movie man like damn it martin scorsese you can't get mad at this bro so you can say whatever you feel about how he feels about comic book films and i sure have my grievances even though i partially agree with what he's saying but man this is this is Wow, this is fucking peak shit. Also, it has the most creative way to end a movie I've seen in a very long time. Like, oh my goodness, Martin Scorsese, man. This man. Mm -mm -mm. All right, Martin Scorsese. I can't say no more. All right, you talk that talk and you can walk that walk, brother. So for number seven, I got to give it up to talk to me talk to me oh my goodness talk to me um i don't know if the philippo the, the philippo brothers are would ever watch my videos or listen uh but i want to say thank you for making a cool ass movie like this like this is a creepy disturbing fucking movie but i gotta give these guys thousands of prop as a fellow youtuber as a small time fellow youtuber it is fucking beautiful to see two young youtubers make it into the big leagues and make a movie and the movies kick ass all right this is the coolest horror movie i've watched in quite a bit like the premise is super fucking simple it's a possession film about 
possessions and shit. But man, is it so much deeper than that? Talking about um, grief and how grief influences our decisions and make us do things that we never even thought we could possibly do and throw logic out the window um, just because we just miss that person or want to spend more time with that person. I think this movie is by far the strongest horror movie that came out of 2023. Next, Evil Dead Rise. But I just had to put it on my list because it was just such a cool movie. And it's A24. Uh, A24 usually put out bangers uh, and just let directors just direct. And this was a cool ass movie. I know these guys are, are hard at work at the sequel. I can't wait. It's gonna be a banger. And also the thing I love about this movie is that the main character is black. And I love that the black fucking person is flawed in this movie. Like, I know like people will always want to portray black people as like like either thugs or or have their shit together. And it was just nice to see a human character that is black just make poor decisions. But there were reasonable poor decisions. It was almost like the 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 directors knew like, hey, we understand that like in horror movies characters make dumb decisions but in here our our characters have reasons <laughs> and it's like wow all this could have been avoided if they just had just waited it out but that's aside the point shout out to these guys i wish the best luck with the sequel this is a fucking wah movie beautiful movie so for number six and number five we're gonna actually tie them together because Funny enough, they both came out the same time together. Uh, the Barbenheimer Experience. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to actually put that experience as my number six and number five. Because that whole movie going experience was awesome. Like, I went to go see Oppenheimer first. And then I, I saw Barbie a week after. And my God, just the excitement and the like, how extraordinary like so many people pulled up for these two different completely different movies was fucking awesome like you had people in business suits like come in to see Oppenheimer obviously but then you had the guys and the girls dressed up in pink for Barbie it was so great but the reason why I'm giving you know Barbie number six on my list it's because Barbie is such a fantastic movie. Like, it is so good. And it is great to have a movie that just speaks to women. You know, just speaks to them. Like, I'm so used to just seeing movies about us guys and whatnot. So it was refreshing to see a movie that just spoke to women. But more importantly, it has stuff to say about us as guys as well that really touched me personally. I was like, wow, this is really some touching shit um, about how we as men kind of try to find answers through other hurt men. Hurt men find other answers through hurt men. And it just leads to a lot of bullshit. And I thought that was so refreshing for a movie to say that. And say that, no, you are good enough. And no, you are Ken enough, as the movie says. To find your own Barbie, or just be on your own, or something like that. Like, that was so really profound. A, a modern, uh, modern day movie says that to people. And I wish more young men would, would watch this movie and just take in what the movie was saying about that. And like live with that because I think nowadays with men we're kind of lost and we kind of needed a Barbie movie to remind us like hey even though you know the movie takes jabs at men it is what it is we take take it on the chin move on but when you look at and analyze what the movie's saying it's a blast and I enjoyed everything from the set design uh, Margot Robbie of course uh, <laughs> I love the dance sequence. Everything about the movie is so good. Um, the only issue I have with the movie, honestly, is... And this is something that I'm just like, motherfucker, 
because we made it mainstream, of course they had to do this. But god damn it, it's too on the nose. It is too on the nose on what it's saying with women. But you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> It's a fun movie, so it didn't even bother me all too much. But I was just like, we could, we could, we could subtly hint at some of these shits. But whatever, uh, it's a fun ass movie. I enjoyed it. The last thing I will say, and this is a, this is in regards to another movie that's in my top ten list, is that I love that this movie was a love letter to Barbie as a character or as a product, but also. A criticism of Barbie as a product that a lot of young women love Barbie and it was a fun toy but also it, it really had uh, it really left a lot of uh, uneven expectations for women and I, I, I really appreciate what it was saying I was like damn it remind me of another movie on my list that I really love wink wink hint hint <laughs> but yeah barbie was fucking awesome i had to put it as number six and as for number five obviously oppenheimer ooh wee um oppenheimer was ooh, three hour long biopic you know and i'm not gonna lie to you uh the pacing yeah the second half is kind of like uh, all right once you see the atomic bomb drops it's like wow that's impressive but man, I was it on board from beginning to end. I was like, this is a fucking awesome ass movie, bro. And it had one of my favorite movie going experience. I've never watched the film in uh, seven, um, 70 millimeter. And I scavenged the world to find a theater that sh shows it. And I finally found one, and oh my god, it was a breathtaking experience. So I watched the movie twice. And then, just to sit there and watch a biopic of the man who created the atomic bomb, I never thought it would be so fascinating, and also uh, gave me a different outlook on the man. It was such a good movie, man. Like, such an awesome-ass movie. It was also a very haunting movie by the end i was just like man and what it had to say about like like chain reactions and how it's only a matter of time before somebody creates something worse than what oppenheimer created man it was so fascinating of a film shout outs to christopher nolan this is probably his best film since the dark knight for me inception inception is a uh, one of my favorite christopher nolan movies this is like his my second or third favorite movie from him, bro. Like this was awesome. As a Christopher Nolan fan too, like this was awesome. You know, shout outs to Christopher Nolan, man. The GOAT, the GOAT, I will be there. Anytime he got a movie, I will be there. <laughs> but this was really fucking good, man. Shout outs to that. And also shout outs to um, the actor who plays Oppenheimer, um, Crillian Murphy, he plays in every single Christopher Nolan movie, and I love it, and he finally gets the time to shine, and he kills it as Oppenheimer, bro, he kills it in this movie, loved it, for number four, man, oh man, Godzilla minus one, holy shit, you know that new Godzilla movie that's gonna come out soon, Godzilla and King Kong, where they tag teaming, yeah, that shit's trash, alright, the movie's gonna be fucking trash, because, I've never watched a Godzilla movie where I'm literally tearing up because I care so much about the human characters. Ever, never, ever in my life that I ever think I would get to the point where I care about human characters in a Godzilla fucking movie. That's the power of good storytelling. And I love what this theme has to say about pointless sacrifice. It almost reminds me of what last jedi was trying to kind of hint at but failed miserably on that theme i really appreciated what this movie was saying and the simple fact that you care about the characters it makes every single decision at every single moment where they have to go against godzilla you're just praying you're just praying to the elder gods like please 
make sure my characters make it through this situation. And I think they do something incredible with Godzilla's design, which is that he looks fucking pissed off like he's raised in juice. That you're like scared of him. Like you're like he looks scary. And that's never been something any of the Godzilla movies, or at least the American version, have ever done is make Godzilla look scary. Now he just looks like yeah, he's our hero and he's our protector. And I'm like, that's that's cool. But I don't give a fuck about that. You know, I don't care about the characters. I don't care about anybody. I just want to see Godzilla fuck shit up. And here I was like, Godzilla, no, don't fuck up anything. No, please. It was so good. By, by the time we got to the ending of the film, there's a scene where something gets revealed and it gets a happy resolution. And the whole theater, including myself, started applauding. Bro, we were clapping so hard. Like That's how much we were all in sync to how great this movie was, man. And I need more movie, more Godzilla movies like this, where it has something to say about us as humans. Not this bullshit that America is doing, where it's just a bunch of giant fucking monsters slap boxing each other for hours. Like, no. And then focus on characters I give two shits about. No, I need actual, like, meat on the bone, all right? And this showed me, like, the beauty of what... Um foreign movies can do to a property for number three it's our boy keanu reeves man back at it again for one last ride john wick four. Oh my goodness what a beautiful finality to an awesome ass action franchise like this one my goodness Thank you, Keanu Reeves, for all your hard work and dedication. Shoutouts to the stunt team. Shoutouts to everyone who's made this fucking franchise awesome, man. Like, I cannot stress how much I love the John Wick franchise. Like, they don't make action movies like this no more. I'm sorry to say. They really don't, man. Because this shit was fucking awesome. Now, is it dumb? Yeah, now it's getting a little ridiculous. Like, John is able to survive, like, falls off of high ass buildings and land on calls and fucking walk it off. Fall off a fucking 10 to 20 feet of staircases and he completely fine. Listen, I get it. I get it, guys. It's fucking stupid. However, I still fucking love it. Why? Because it is peak shit just the creative process of these action scenes the way how they is everything so stylistically done in these fucking fight scenes is incredible like jesus and they get better in each movie it's like wow like in incredible <laughs> there's even a scene the infamous shotgun breath scene bruh <laughs> that scene my goodness throughout the whole film i was just cheesing and smirking but when that scene happened i was just like fuck yes <laughs> this is a fucking movie this is cinema at its finest bruh oh my god i don't uh i don't know we'll ever get something as beautiful as john wick again but i just want to once again congratulate everyone who worked on this film um you entertained me and this this movie will will always be in my head and in my heart bro like you y'all don't know how much i love john wick for i think this is my second favorite john wick movie next to john wick 3 only because john wick 3 has the coolest opening of the franchise but fuck me, John Wick 4 is peak. And I think the thing that I love so much about it is that they know when that this ride is over. And that, you know, we could do spinoffs, we could do other shit in the world of John Wick. But man, <laughs> it's a breath of fresh air to know that a franchise has four continuous great movies bangers after bangers 
and now it's over. Uh, I know there's talks of a John Wick 5, but fuck that. The way how this movie ends, it ends on a beautiful, finite note that I don't want them to fuck that up. Like, it's the perfect ending for John and his story arc. Loved every minute of it. And I would not ask for anything more, man. This movie's fucking insane. I gotta. I wish I could talk more about the action scenes, but it's a spectacle. You need, you need to watch the movie to just get the hang of the, the action scenes. But I will say, there's one action scene where they're fighting on the street, and cars are just hitting the motherfuckers. And there's one where John is fighting this one dude, and the guy gets hit on her car, and he goes flying twirling in the air and while he got hit in the fucking <laughs> with the car john is literally doing some high time shit and shooting him in the air while he's spinning in while the enemy is spinning in the air that's some devil may cry type shit and i love it i i live for this movie this movie is fucking golden baby i love it for number two i gotta try and do this video without tearing up for this part so please forgive me if i do uh guardians of the galaxy volume 3 this movie this movie was a beautiful emotional fucking movie like this was like truly when people ask me why do i love not only just the mcu but just like movies that have finalities, I point to this movie as a prime example of that. Like, the simple fact that you've gone 10 years with these characters and they all just get beautiful, great endings is so heartwarming. So heartwarming. And it's crazy how this whole movie is about a raccoon that's unconscious. <laughs> But is he is the heart of the film, and he he is the emotional anchor of this film. And Bradley Cooper, shout outs to the goat, kills it in every scene he's in with this character, bro. Through flashbacks, and it's so emotional. And as someone has gone through um, similar circumstances like Rocket, I could personally relate to a lot of that to to this shit. And that scene when he's talking to his friends, I'm not going to spoil it, but man, I was just thinking back to all the moments in in the Guardian franchise and in the Avengers movie when they all got dusted. Bruh, when they got all got dusted and my boy Rocket was the only one that was left. And I was just thinking to myself, like, damn, damn, Rocket, I know he's probably asking himself, like, everyone always leaves me and shit, and I'm like, damn, Rocket, and I know he probably asking himself, like, what is it, my turn? I was like, man, this movie is too emotional, man, like, get this, get this, throw it. Give my man Rocket a, uh, a hug, man. Like, protect this man at all costs. <laughs> protect my boy Rocket at all costs, man. This movie's great, man. It is truly a beautiful send-off to not only just the Guardians, but a beautiful send-off to the MCU. I felt like this movie was unintentionally saying, it's okay, you don't have to watch any more MCU films if you don't want to. This is it. Like, and after that, I just have not watched any more MCU stuff. I haven't watched the TV shows. I haven't watched any of the movies. Uh, I'll probably come back for Daredevil when that comes out. But other than that, I've been satisfied, you know. And it's because of this movie. And I just want to give James Gunn. I just want to say, man, like, bruh, thank you, James Gunn. Thank you. This was, this was a fucking treat. This was a beautiful movie. And I keep telling DC fans, if, if he can make you cry and make you fall in love 
with a talking raccoon, a robot girl, a fucking, <laughs> a, a, a fucking green lady, a green man that's buff and shit, that wears no shirt. If he can make you fall in love with all these characters, then you're in safe hands, DC fans. You are in safe hands when he does the Superman movie. I'm telling y'all, James Gunn's got you. He's got y'all. Because this movie's fucking beautiful. Easily one of the best Marvel movies. And a, and a beautiful swan song to the MCU. For number one, my number one favorite movie of 2023. Drum roll, please. That's right, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This is a no-brainer. If you if you fucking watch my video on this fucking movie, you knew it was coming as my favorite movie of 2023. This shit is peak Spider-Man shit, peak animation shit, peak storytelling shit. This is just peak cinema. You smell this shit, you smell the whiff of cinema. All in one. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful film. And it's just a one, a, a two-parter film. Imagine what we do and beyond the Spider-Verse. Like, incredible. Incredible what this movie does. And I've gone on and on and talked about what I loved about the movie in a previous video so i'm not gonna spend too long i'm not gonna talk about the shit that i didn't even get to talk about in that video like the music the 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 orchestra sounds and whatnot the actual um original soundtrack fucking incredible loved every minute of it but of course the studio soundtrack metro boo came through and listen, I'm not saying any of the songs are like um, Sunflower, but my God, we have some hitters in this damn soundtrack. Annihilate, I'm wide awake, be very afraid. I'm in my own universe, give me space. I'm in my own universe, give me space, 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 space. Wheezy Carter. I'm about to go Peter Parker. I'm Spider-Man. If you ate me, you just like creepy crawler. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Self-love, he don't love himself. Trying to love me, cuff me. Told the truth to him, he don't trust me. Oh my, she's a long way from suburban town. Came to the city for the love. Got her hurting now. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> they were cooking. <laughs> they were cooking with the fucking this this music, bro. They were cooking so hard with this stuff. And all my friends had their own favorite song from the album. And not only that, but just just the simple fact that it fit all the scenes and certain characters so well. I was like, God damn it, Metro killed it. Shout outs to him. He really deserved he really deserved that cameo in this movie a lot. Like <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, I really would like that costume. It really looks cool for Miles and Spider-Man 2. Uh, I don't know if that's a possibility, how license would work with that, but it would be really cool to get that costume. But yeah, this movie is just fantastic. A love letter to Spider-Man again, but are also a critique again. Like It's so perfect, and it has the coolest cliffhanger I've seen since Avengers infinity war like coolest cliffhangers like literally people were gasping in the theater when they saw the reveal and like the movie does such a good job at hinting at it. when you get to the third act i was like oh my goodness like this is incredible like this movie is a work of art <laughs> i love it i have nothing more to say about the movie i think i've said everything i needed to say in the previous video that i made on it i will however say this my only critique of the film as a spider-man fan 
is literally that I did not personally, you know, care for their depiction of of the Scarlet Spider, seeing as though that is my favorite costume. So to see it and see the Scarlet Spider there, Ben Riley there, it was like, oh shit. But he was kind of like a joke character, and it was kind of like, I don't know how I feel about that. But it doesn't matter because the whole rest of the movie is good. Even I hear people bitching about Miguel's character not being one for one like the comics. I'm like, but the story they're trying to tell, I think is completely fine. Again, and I got a hot take. Fuck adaptation if it fits the story. All right. Fuck being close to the source material if it's good for the story. And I think what the Spider-Verse team has shown is that they that they love Spider-Man. And that they're willing to take risks and they know what the fuck they're doing. So, and this is two times in a row. This is my favorite Spider-Man movie next to Spider-Man 2. Easily. Like, blow it out of the water, bro. Like, there's even a scene in this movie I didn't even think of. Of showing off Spider-Man's power. Of when Gwen and, and Miles is, is web swinging. Which is by far my favorite web swinging scene. By, by far of all spider-man movies um and they're and they're on top of the um this tower and they and the camera turns upside down and they sit on the on the on the gargoyle upside down i'm like how the fuck did nobody ever thought of that before i was like huh, they can do that i never thought of that that is fucking clever yeah. oh my goodness this movie peak cinema shit i have nothing more to say I'm done. That's my number one favorite movie. And I would just like to add, like, thank God we living in a great day and age as Spider-Man fans where we can have a live action uh, Spider-Verse movie with No Way Home. You got this animated feature-esque movie that is fucking awesome with the Spider-Verse films. And then you have the Spider-Man uh, Insomniac's take of Spider-Man as fucking banging. We are living in the golden age of Spider-Man fans, bro. And the comics. We have the ultimate run fucking doing Spider-Man. And it's the sickest shit ever. Guys, we peaked. We peaked, Web Warriors. What are you complaining about? Are you still bitching about something about Spider-Man? You're a miserable fuck. This is peak shit. Peak shit. Peak. Peak shit. Anywho, that's gonna do it for my video. That's gonna be my top 10 favorite films of 2023. If you disagree with the list, let me know what's your top 10 or your number one favorite movie of last year. And stay tuned. There will be new videos coming very, very soon. It's your boy, Mr. Degenerate, signing out and have a good one, my little degenerates.